Hi, Chris here, and uh, today we're going to be having a look at this uh, Abloy plug uh, lock thing. Uh, it's got the exec core in it, um, which is uh, quite a, a, a tricky, uh, tricky little lock, actually. Uh, really sort of fun, interesting design, uh, interesting to make uh, make picks for, and interesting to pick. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit on the design little bit on the uh, the tool and a bit on the picking technique which uh, hopefully will demystify it a little bit for uh, anyone else out there who uh, wants to give one of these a go so this is the tool I'm using uh, it's the uh, distortainer pick from RWB custom picks which uh, I've made some uh, some new tips for so tensioner looks like this it's kind of similar to the key profile but um, with some additional material removed um, for reasons I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Uh, I've made that from a, a one and a half millimeter e ejector pin, uh, ground and filed to shape. Now, uh, if I was starting this again, I'd probably use a smaller pin, a one millimeter pin, because uh, it would let me use a, a, a smaller tube for the, for the pick tip itself. So obviously this does work, um, but it does mean that for the tip itself, you're quite restricted on space. So the tip looks like this. It's a sort of double Y profile. This is made from a piece of two millimeter stainless tube and a bit of uh, a bit of pick that I broke, uh, sold, sold the soldered onto there and then uh, ground and filed to that shape. Um, you can see that I've just eaten into the tube a little bit on one side there. Um, so I've been trying to file it very, very close to the tube. A two millimeter tube will just go down the middle of the lock, uh, and really I, I could have done with a smaller tube that'll make it a little bit easier, a little bit easier to make. Uh, I've then uh, I've then soldered that into some other other bits of tube, so it'll interface nicely with the front of the lock. Um, that's you know not important from a function perspective. It's just uh, just makes it work with the handles. Okay, here you can uh, see I've taken a, a disc out of the lock and the, the pick tip out of the, the rest of the pick. You can see how that double Y uh, goes onto the uh, sort of internal corners uh, inside the disc there, uh, giving two-way rotation. You, you can also see here the, uh, the true and false gates, how uh, you've got a nice, uh, a nice deep true gate. Uh, but then actually there's there's false gates of different depths in here um, which means that uh, when I do the pick you get a mixture of, of decoding uh, feeling the width of those gates but also picking um, feeling for binding discs and I have to do more than one pass through the lock because these gates have dip different depth they stop binding um, but then um, you're not necessarily picked, you might just be in a, in a deeper full skate. So I do end up going through the lock twice. So we look at how the, uh, the tensioner loads up the last disc. You've got this special profile on the inside. It's got these, these, little, uh, these little fingers coming in. Um, so the tensioner, will, will, uh, when you're applying normal rotation it'll load up on the uh, the flats um, but uh, when it comes to counter rotating it as you, which you need to to free up the sidebar sometimes you can do that and the uh, the tension just just catches on those little noses so it can it can turn that last disc um, back anti-clockwise and, and pop the sidebar out as uh, as necessary um, the, the, I didn't do a brilliant job of this one. Obviously it works, um, but there's a bit more play in it. You see there's a decent amount of play there than I'd really like. I took a bit too much material off. If I was starting again, uh, I'd, I'd make that a bit tighter. Just have a better control over, the, over that last disc. Um, really, really all you need is something that's gonna go, go nicely into that corner. So it can load up on both the uh, the big flat and the uh, and the nose, um, so something like this, but a little bit bigger would be uh, would be ideal. Okay, so here we are. We've got the core in the in the vice. I'll show you how the pick works. So tensioner is going to pick up on 
just these last two discs. I put that all the way to the back. There you go, you can see it's, it's turned those last two. Uh, it's also turned this this zero disc at the front. Um, it's connected to the uh, uh, the DSS. Um, it's a bit tricky to do this without blocking the key wave or blocking the view. Sorry, I'll uh, I'll give it a give it a try. If I just go in and pick up on a, a random disc. You can see that it'll turn it'll turn a lot of the way without uh, without disturbing anything. But if you watch this this zero disc, as I get to this sort of extreme of movement, you see it starts to turn it. It's overturned it, so that's going to take it out of the gate. Um, but I can still turn that back again. But then if I just drop off that disc into the spacer gap, and counter rotate, you can see I've, I've brought the uh, that zero disc back again. So what I'm doing there is I'm just pushing on the DSS bars uh, using the other side of the pick tip within the spacer gap. So like that you can you can work through the lock. Let's see if I can find another disc. There we go, next disc. So you can work through the lock. Um, turning the discs to where they need to go. And if you need to go to the extreme, as you come off and into the spacer gap to go for the next disc, it does actually naturally uh, return the, the DSS bars. And uh, as a result, that, that uh, zero disc with its gate back into the correct position. Now, later on in the pick where you're not having to go back to uh, the, um, the sort of rest position of each disc every time you need to do that consciously so if you if you're pushing a disc to somewhere near the extreme of the movement you do then have to deliberately drop into the space gap and go all the way anti-clockwise to make sure uh, make sure you've got the uh, the front of the lock set okay so here you can see how the uh, how the tip interacts with the uh, uh, the DSS bars. Um, remember that over rotation I was talking about? You see, you need a bit of space in the uh, uh, the tensioner itself to allow that bit of over rotation in the DSS bars. You can see that there. Just goes a little bit, a little bit beyond where it would, uh, where it would be in the tensioning position. Um, and you see how the, the, the tip, oh, I'll just hold that still. It's got you know, a reasonable range of motion within, within the DSS bars. And then to do that last bit of rotation, you can just, just do that, just push it over and then uh, go into a different gap and push it back again. So it's, uh, so it's set and the, um, the gate for the sidebar on this this let's call it zero disc is, is in the correct position so that's super important actually that the tensioner uh, it needs to load up that last disc but it also mustn't restrain that over rotation over rotation in the DSS bars okay so we've got the locking device uh, here is the key See the uh, lock operating completely normally.
Excellent, this one. So that will do. Just two that was tight. Okay. Well, that's in the gate with plenty of movement. Feels good. Disc three again, that's binding. Again, into a gate. It's nice and loose already. If you loop that there. Disc five. That's binding. It's still binding. Gate but binding again. Okay, that's loose now. But obviously, the lock hasn't opened, so something that's not good. Maybe, maybe five. Feels better now, I've got a bit of movement on the core, obviously the lock hasn't opened. Four feels good, three, good, two, feels good, one, yeah one's binding now. is open. Awesome. Alright, have to lock that back up again so I can get the tool up. Fiddly to gut, actually, so this will take a minute or two. That's the end cap. This, this washer, I have to take apart the core a little bit before I can get it out. So it's the uh, uh, DSS assembly. I'll come back to that in a minute. This special springy washer at the front too. Um, I'll just take out a couple of discs from the front so I can get, a, get the tweezers on the uh, on the housing. Uh, 
just take one of these out. Okay, so that's all the uh, all the guts. Take this uh, this thing apart as well. Got this profile plate at the front, and we've got these these two wafers. It's the housing that holds them. that supports the, the DSS bars. Um, so I've got them in my hand. Let's have a look at them. There's the DSS bars. Uh, here's the uh, here's the housing holds all the discs. Uh, sidebar that's a rectangular profile with the uh, the hook at the back. Let's have a look at some discs. Um, so there's the special profile disc from the back of the lock. And the next disc is a it's that zero cut. It's also a special. It's got the kind of uh, like a ramp profile on the gate, help lift the sidebar out when you're relocking it, and uh, no false gates. Rest of the disc, rest of the disc, sorry, uh, all look like this. So you got a standard profile. You got um, nice deep true gate, and then a whole load of false gates. Um, let's have a look at the body of the lock as well. Here we go. It's just a very simple thing, uh, but you can see there the groove that the sidebar runs in. Um, what else is potentially interesting? Uh, let's have a look at this. So here's the special disc from the front. Um, you've got that different internal profile that mates with the DSS bars. Again, you've got a single gate on it, no, no point having a, having false gates on there, and it's got that, that ramp profile to help lift the sidebar out when, uh, when you're relocking. So, uh, there we go. Uh, Abloy Exec plug cylinder lock picked and gutted.